This video contains full spoilers for I, the Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative. I won't be going over information in the same order that the game does, and I'll be assuming that you've played the game recently. This video is a summary of events that is specifically focused on the timeline twist. Any plot points that aren't really affected by this twist won't be talked about in that much detail. This is also a video version of a Google Doc that I created, and I'll have that linked in the description of the video. I may also continue to update and make changes to that document if I find more information, and if there's anything significant, I'll add it as a pinned comment to this video. At the beginning of Chapter 5 on Mizuki's route, a scene in Marble Bar takes place in which Mama speaks directly to you, the player. Here she reveals that the order of events that you experienced is not their true order. Two of the game's dates, the 14th and 12th, take place on the opposite year to the rest of the route that they belong to. So, Ryuki's chapter 2 and 4 take place in the present, while Mizuki's chapters 2 and 4 take place in the past. The rest of the timeline is not affected by this change. All alternate branches and endings are completely unaffected. This only applies to the main routes for each character. Your next question is probably, why did Mizuki look the same six years ago? And the answer to that is that on those dates you were playing as Bibi, not Mizuki Okuda. One of the clearest points of foreshadowing for this twist is that Mizuki's bullet wound from the first game disappears on those two days. The game even reminds you of her wound in the quiz at the very beginning. On the final day of that investigation, someone was shot in the leg by the culprit. Who was that someone? Bibi's voice is also slightly different from Mizuki's, and their outfit is just a uniform. Although their hairstyle and bike are never explained, that's just a coincidence that they're the same. One thing to keep in mind about Ryuki's perspective on the past is that what we see of him six years ago is actually Ryuki on the 10th of February in the present, explaining what happened six years ago to Mizuki. In 2.10, Ryuki Chapter 0, Dispossessed. Ryuki is both drunk and mentally unwell at the time, so that leaves the room open for him being an unreliable narrator. However, there's no evidence that what we see of him is incorrect, and it does seem to line up with everything else, but it's something to keep in mind. We also know that Ryuki had some mental trauma before TC Purge that affected his behavior. It's unclear what specifically this manifested in though, and it makes sense that the glitches that Ryuki experiences, the blue silhouettes, unintelligible text, and broken textures appearing over the environment, are related to TC Purge, as they lean into the idea that the world is a simulation, which was the whole purpose of TC Purge. The broken dialogue he speaks also ties into this when decoded. The text is Japanese run through Motibake, and it results in it all being jumbled up and nonsense, but it can be decoded to what it was actually written as, where he's saying things like, break, fray, achieve moksha, this is a fictional illusionary world, um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, break this virtual space and liberate me from this false world. Things that all tie into TC Purge and the idea that the world is a uh, simulation. However, Ryuki is not injected with TC Purge until the 12th in the present, in 212 Ryuki Chapter 2 Go, when he visits the underground cathedral. In 215 Mizuki Chapter 5 M1 Births, Ryuki states, When I was infected with TC Purge, my symptoms got worse. Disorientation, short-term memory loss, hallucinations. He's been seeing hallucinations for six years now. The mental trauma of what happened to his brother. Ryuki's brother died 12 years ago at this point, so the HBK six years ago must have triggered his mental trauma to return. However, he didn't immediately start seeing hallucinations. The first hallucination Ryuki has is in 215, Ryuki Chapter 5 R1, Not All a Dream, when he visits Tokiko's office. This comes right after Tokiko's hologram explains more aspects of simulation theory to Ryuki. Presumably after all the terrible things that have happened, Ryuki has come to feel that it would make life easier if he accepted the simulation theory. That combined with his trauma manifests in him seeing glitches that would help to support the simulation theory. Then, when he contracts TC Purge, it makes these hallucinations far worse, as he explicitly states on the 15th in the present. After this point, Ryuki has many frequent hallucinations. This timing would also imply that what we see of the Face to Faith quiz show on the 10th six years ago, the beginning of the game, is actually Ryuki remembering the event in the present after learning about the body of Jin being discovered in the stadium. It is likely that this would have triggered his trauma from having first seen the body back then, and it would explain why he started drinking so much at Brahman. We know that Ryuki was told this information before Mizuki found him, as in 210 Ryuki Chapter 0 Dispossessed, Mizuki states, Probably weren't listening to me at Brahmin, so I'll say it again. No need. Tama told me earlier. 
Jin Furue's other half was found. There is also evidence to support the fact that between the 11th and the 15th in the present, Ryuki is experiencing events in the same way that we do, switching back and forth between present and past. In 213, Mizuki Chapter 3 M1 Hell, when asked, Are you okay? Ryuki claims, Mr. Date seemed well too. I saw him earlier, despite the fact that Date has been presumed dead for six years now. Then, when asked, Why are you looking at the Ferris wheel? He responds, I'm waiting for it to come down. These responses make sense when you consider that at this exact same time six years ago, 2.13, Ryuki Chapter 3, R1 Smiles for Tears, Ryuki was chasing Shoma who had run away from home. Shoma gets into the number 2 car of the Ferris wheel, and then the chapter ends with Ryuki waiting for it to come back down. This is further supported by Wink syncing with him, where you can hear him say, I have to protect him, before something terrible happens. Then, in 2.14, Ryuki Chapter 4, R1, Well Known, which takes place in the present, Ryuki is back at the ferris wheel and says to Tama, Shoma was on the number 2 car, right? She responds, why do you ask? Then, when the number 2 car comes back around, Shoma is of course nowhere to be seen. Ryuki is shocked and then has another TC purge induced episode. In 2.14, Mizuki Chapter 4 M1 Visions, Mizuki, actually Bibi, visits Shoma in the hospital and Shoma says, I told Ryuki I don't need to go to the hospital. Ryuki? He brought me here last night, around 1am. This would indicate that Ryuki did find Shoma in the number 2 car after it came back around, and then took him to the hospital. Then, six years later, Ryuki's memories of six years ago are mixing with the present, causing the modelled version of events that we experience to occur. There is even more evidence for this that I'll point out throughout the synopsis. Six years ago. The timeline switching doesn't happen until the 12th, so you can skip there if you want to. February 10th, Sunday, six years ago. 2.10, Ryuki Chapter 0, A Strange Tale. The face-to-face -face quiz show livestream at Studio Divita occurs. Iris, Mizuki, Moma, Chimpei, Boss, and Ryuki are all contestants. Komeji is the host. Partway through the livestream, the lights cut out, and when they turn back on, the right half of Jin Furue's body lay on the floor with a sign sticking out that reads, Free to Free, and a QR code for a video that comes to be referred to as the QR video. Suddenly, the corpse combusts into flames. February 11th, Monday, six years ago. 2.11, Ryuki Chapter 1, Anyone Imagines. Ryuki, Boss, and Date meet in Boss's room. Date explains that he's on vacation due to the new labor laws, but he's come here anyway because he's bored. Boss tells Ryuki that Abyss is having issues with the communication network right now. Any data obtained by your AI ball can't be uploaded to the cloud. Any data saved from today on will be lost, if the AI ball breaks. This is very important. Iris and Amame tell Ryuki about the other video from about half a year ago, Bats 490. At Matsushita Diner, Ota and Kizuna repeat the information about Bats 490. Kizuna performs her dance at the diner, and Lian, who was sitting in the corner alone, falls in love with her. This is their first interaction. Mizuki tells Ryuki that Shoma has solved Bats 490, so Ryuki visits him. Shoma tells Ryuki that the video's hidden message leads to Horidori Institute of Genetics. We find out later that this was a lie. Ryuki heads to Horidori and meets Chikata for the first time. He talks about Purge, technology that rewrites DNA. Ryuki wink syncs with Chikata and finds out that he knows about Bats 490. Chikata claims that he doesn't. Ryuki brings Chikata to Abyss to sync with him and learn the truth. 2.11, Ryuki Chapter 1, Nefarious Institute. In this Somnium, you combine two halves of different bodies to gain new powers. In Chikata's Somnium, Ryuki sees someone who looked like they were in Knives was making the Bats 490 video. 2.11, Ryuki Chapter 1, Ought to Know. Ryuki goes to the Japanese branch of Nice at Loss, where he meets Tokiko. She confirms that she had her subordinates create the video, Bats 490, and that they had been seeking high IQ individuals with the capability to decode it. However, she claims that the QR video is completely unrelated to Nice. Tokiko also explains that Nice is trying to tear at the seams of the world and reveal that it is a simulation. Then she says that Chikata is a former member of Nice who left 20 years ago and became an avid believer in the Order of Percent, an offshoot of Nice. Tokiko asks if you are a Freya. Saying yes and answering with your number brings you to the end. Ryuki answers no, but begins to suspect Tokiko as the word Frey was also used in the QR sign. She also claims that the appearance of Jin's body was a bug found in the simulation of the world. Ryuki then goes to investigate Studio Divider once more. In the investigation, 
it is determined that the appearance of the body was only made to look as though supernatural forces were involved. The show director Chimpei states that he lent the studio to a person named Tera. Tera sends a message to Sakiba Hai. Ryuki immediately heads there and finds Chikara's right half stuck to the blackboard. February 12th, Tuesday, six years ago. 2.12, Mizuki Chapter 2, Traveler. At this point, we switch to Mizuki, BB's, perspective. The day after Ryuki found Chikara's right half in Sekiba High, his left half appears in Yoyogi Park. Mizuki, BB, arrived at the scene in the morning as soon as she heard the report. Ryuki is already at the scene. He claims that it's his destiny to solve the case. When asked about the body, he says, I'm thinking about what happened six years ago. How could this happen? Anyway, that half of a body is definitely Chikara's. I saw Chikara's right half at Sekiba High. This is the other half. This is clearly written to trick the player into thinking that Ryuki is saying that he found the other half of the body six years ago, but the use of the word anyway makes it clear that the talk of the body is unrelated to his thinking about what happened six years ago. In 2.13, Ryuki Chapter 3 Farewell, Ryuki reveals that his brother died six years ago and that half of his body was crushed by a truck, so it is highly likely that this is what he was actually thinking about here. Mizuki BB investigates the area and finds a challenge from Terra, find three red and blue balloons. She sets out to look for them. At the Kumakura office, she finds that Moma has a voce locho, a voice changer. Mizuki BB borrows this from Moma and will use it when disguised as the masked woman throughout the game. Moma also reveals that he's known Leon for years and that he helped him before Leon went clean. During the search for the balloons, Mizuki, Bibi, learns from Boss that Ryuki had shot at a civilian putting up balloons, having mistaken them for Terra. Boss calls this an unprecedented scandal. At the Harbour Warehouse District, Mizuki, Bibi, runs into Gen. They already know each other. She notices that Gen is agitated and wink syncs with him to see a vision of Gen talking to someone. X-raying Gen also confirms that it is indeed him in the outfit. We learn here that Amame is the only person that has seen Gen's face and not been afraid. Gen tells Mizuki, Bibi, that his appearance is a result of genome experiments at the hands of Jakarta Horidori. Mizuki, Bibi, finds one balloon at Ayawen and another at Ikume Shrine. They both contain a note inside. Later, Mizuki, Bibi, gets a call from Boss that says that a balloon was found at the docks at 8.30am. She didn't see one when she was there, but Gen was at the docks before her, so she heads to Brahman to investigate. Looking in the rubbish bin in the kitchen, she finds a popped balloon. Mizuki, Bibi, interrogates Gen, but he doesn't answer. She brings him to Abyss to sync with him. 2.12, Mizuki Chapter 2, Necessary Intervention. This is the cooking somnium. Inside Mizuki, Bibi is able to find a note written inside the final balloon. 2.12, Mizuki Chapter 2, Left Behind. Combining all three balloon notes, they find a clue that leads to Horidori Institute underground. She calls on Leon for his unlocking skills to help. Leon also used to work at Horidori Institute as a janitor and has heard rumors about a hidden passageway underground. They look for it together. During their search, Mizuki, Bibi, hears from Leon about TC Purge. It causes people to act insane and supposedly research is being done on it at Horidori Institute. Eventually, the two of them find a hidden staircase. This is where the chapter ends. However, in 222 epilogue Braver Than All Flowers, Mizuki asks Leon and Bibi about what happened that night. Huh? Why do you ask? I'm just curious. Late that night, I went to the basement of Horidori Institute with Quartz. But there was nothing there. It was just an empty space. The slicer was hidden under the floor, and there was no door going to Ulu's room. There might have been a way in, but we didn't have time to look. Yeah. Right after we got down there, we heard footsteps. We ran out of Horidori Institute after getting up the stairs. February 13th, Wednesday, six years ago. 2.13, Ryuki Chapter 3, Farewell. Boss scolds Ryuki for his mistake yesterday, shooting at a civilian. Boss also tells Ryuki about her adopted daughter, Bibi, who has been begging Boss not to decrease her allowance when she gets bad grades, and that she just turned 18 last year, but she pretty much grew up all on her own. She also states that Bibi is capable of handling her own business, unlike a certain someone who gets overeager and screws up big time. This is of course referencing how BB has been making better progress on the case than Ryuki, and didn't shoot at a civilian. Boss tells Ryuki that the case has been given the name Half-Body Serial Killings, or HB Case. Ryuki is demoted to a regular police officer. 
He is told that if he can solve the case in three days, Boss will take back his punishment and he won't be demoted. At Akume Shrine, Ryuki talks to Tama. He tells her that six years ago on this day, his brother died. He says, My brother and I were in the city, and we happened to see a wanted criminal. I called the police right away, but the culprit tried to flee on a big trailer truck. He was about to get away, so my brother tried to stop him, and he ended up in front of it, and... He got run over, crushed half his body. This is the watch he was wearing. His time has been frozen since, and I lost my other half. My brother died six years ago, on February 13th. Today was the day. Tama states that she and Ryuki have known each other about half a year now. Ryuki goes to Ayawin and sees Kizuna and Mizuki. Kizuna reveals that she had an adopted sister, Bibi, who she called Big Sis and that there is something about Mizuki that reminds Kizuna of her. She also states that when Bibi turned 15, she was adopted, so they do not live together any longer. Ryuki then asks Reichi, Kizuna's father, about his investments in Horidori Institute. Reichi states that he felt that there was a great deal of value and potential in Chikara's research to help children who can't live a normal life due to illnesses they were born with. Tama finds that there was no one in Reiji's family that has an incurable disease, but of course this is excluding his briefly adopted daughter, Bibi, who does have an incurable illness. Tama does find that 23 years ago, a child in Ayoin's care, Uda Somazuki, went missing, and that he still hasn't been found. After their conversation, Leon enters the scene and asks Reiji for permission to marry his daughter, Kizuna. Reiji denies Leon's request and says that he wouldn't touch Leon with a 10-foot pole. Leon tells Ryuki, Mizuki, and Kizuna that he was fired from Horidori Institute by Takata Horidori after he found out about Leon's past. Ryuki asks if Leon hasn't used his lockpicking skills recently. Leon says, The thing is, last night... Last night? You broke into a house? No, not a house. Uh, I guess I have to say it. I broke in to Horidori Institute. What? Oh, but like I said, it wasn't a crime. It was for an investigation. I was helping the police. The police. The goal was to get inside the hidden room inside Horadori Institute. But in the end, we didn't find anything. So I didn't take anything either. Please believe me. Wait, who asked you to do this investigation? I can't tell you that. It's supposed to be a secret. Correct. We can tell from the true timeline that Leon is referring to helping Bibi break into Horadori Institute on the 12th. Leon then proposes to Kizuna with a pair of glass slippers. Kizuna says that she would need to spend more time with Leon before she could answer that. If after six years you still feel the same way, then... Ryuki then suggests that they bury the slippers in a time capsule along with letters about how they currently feel about each other. They do so. Ryuki then visits Shoma at the ferris wheel at Misaton to ask him about why he lied about the message of Bats 490. Shoma says that he just wanted the attention and never actually deciphered the video. This is another lie. Tama immediately catches this one as his temperature rises. Shoma talks about how his friends make fun of him because of his dad and that he hates him because of it. Ryuki then talks to Komeji. Komeji says that Shoma bought him his tie and that it would be terrible if he lost it. He also reveals that his wife left him due to his failing career as a comedian. Ryuki winksinks with Komeji and finds that he owes a lot of people a lot of money. After hearing about the hidden passageway in Horidori Institute from Leon, Ryuki heads there to search for the place himself. When he does, he finds Komeji with a gun. Ryuki detains Komeji and brings him to Abyss to sync with him. 2.13, Ryuki Chapter 3, Need Info. Komeji's Somnium takes place at Misaton. Ryuki and Tama follow Komeji around, giving him prompts to find out more about his life. They find out that Komeji became part of an illegal gun trade to pay off his debts. He was nowhere near paying it off, and they threaten to take Shoma away. Choosing to protect Shoma above all else will bring you to the Komeji and Shoma end. Choosing to prepare the money for the loan sharks is the choice that continues the main path. That's when Komeji found the important thing owned by Terra. Komeji planned to use this important thing to blackmail Terra. We find out later that he had stolen a body related to the HB case. 2.13, Ryuki Chapter 3, R1, Smiles for Tears. Ryuki goes to the Ender residence to find this important thing, but is contacted by Terra and told to meet them at Studio Divider. He goes there right away. Komeji goes with him. Komeji enters first and makes a video call. Ryuki hides out of sight. After nothing seems to be happening, Ryuki enters the studio. On a screen in the studio, Ryuki watches the Frey to Free video and passes out. 
When he wakes up, he finds himself surrounded by Shoma, Kizuna, Iris, and Amame, along with Komeji's right half in a body bag. Shoma screams and runs out, but Ryuki goes to the amusement park to look for him. Shoma runs into the number two car of the Ferris wheel, and Ryuki decides to wait for Shoma to come back down. This is the end of the chapter. However, we find out what happens next in the following chapter when Mizuki visits Shoma in the hospital. February 14th, Thursday, six years ago, 2.14, Mizuki Chapter 4 M1 Visions Mizuki, Bibi, investigates the left half of Komeji at the rooftop of Misatan department store. Talking to the detective on the scene, Ushidara, he tells Mizuki, Bibi, that Three days ago, 1 a.m. on the 11th, this department store experienced a building-wide power outage. Someone cut the cable. What else? Security guard told me a funny story. I recorded it. It's up on the cloud. I'll listen now. Iba? Got it. I'll play it. Four hours after the power outage, so like five o'clock in the morning on the 11th, someone walked by the security room at the rear entrance. They were pulling something on wheels. What was it? I don't know. Everything was dark because of the power outage. I, I didn't see their face either. I, I couldn't hit it with a flashlight fast enough. Anyway, they broke in and climbed up the stairs. I went after them. But they got the jump on me halfway up the stairs. They pushed me over. I fell down the stairs and blacked out. Do you know where they might have been going? My guess is the rooftop. I heard them muttering under their breath. Rooftop. Rooftop. I need to get the bow. The bow? Yeah, that's what it sounded like. But they weren't speaking very clearly. I couldn't really hear. I think they were really drunk. I could smell alcohol the whole time I was chasing after them. Was it a man or a woman? Sounded like a man. Mizuki, Bibi, talks to Ryuki about what he learned from sinking with Komeji. Putting both their information together, they learned that the person with the suitcase was a drunk Komeji, and that he took the body that Tara had placed on the rooftop, planning to use it as blackmail. Ryuki also mentions that at 4pm this afternoon, he will be meeting with someone to strategize about the case. He says that this person is Date, but we learn later that this is actually Terra in the wink sink at the abandoned factory. Next, Mizuki Bibi visits Shoma at the hospital. She asks him why he's in the hospital and he replies, I told Ryuki I don't need to go to the hospital. Ryuki? He brought me here last night, around 1 a.m. Now we know that Ryuki found Shoma in the number two car after it came back around on the ferris wheel and then took him into the hospital. Mizuki, Bibi, gives Shoma some chocolate for Valentine's Day. This is referenced later, when Mizuki Ogiura gives Shoma the same chocolate on Valentine's Day six years later, and Shoma says that he has deja vu. Mizuki, Bibi, asks if the word bow means anything to him. Shoma says that he gave his father a bow as a present last year. Mizuki, Bibi, speculates that Komeji had left his bow on the roof, and that that was the reason why he went to Misutan rooftop at 5am. Mizuki, Bibi, and Shoma have a heart-to-heart -heart about family. Mizuki Bibi says that I don't have a father or a mother. I don't know my real parents. I don't even know if they're still alive. But I can kind of imagine the pain of losing your parents. I have a younger sister. Well, not technically my sister, but anyway, she's really important to me. I love her more than anything. She's more important to me than my own life. If I lost her, I could just die. So anyway, I, I guess you're feeling something like that. This is another part that tricks you your first time around. Both Mizuki and Bibi don't know their real parents, but the line, I don't even know if they're still alive, doesn't make much sense for Mizuki, given that she has literally lost her adopted parents. It would make a lot more sense to tell Shoma about that than anything else. Next, Bibi talks to her about her younger sister, who you would first assume is Kizuna since she calls Mizuki Big Sis. However, saying that she's more important to her than her own life seems a bit much for what we've seen of their relationship. In retrospect, it makes much more sense when you realize that it's Bibi talking about Mizuki. That night, Mizuki gets a call from Lian. Lian tells her that Kizuna has gone missing. He says, the last time I saw her was at Matsushita Diner. We had dinner. Kizzy, Mame, and Iris went with me. We left a little past nine. I was gonna walk her back home, but she said she'd get a taxi back. Then, Reiji called Lian and asked if Kizuna was with him. Lian wonders if this was because of the video that they watched together. 
Leon says that the police and a brother in arms of his already know. This brother in arms is Date. Aiba tracks Kizuna's phone GPS and Mizuki Bibi head to its location, the abandoned factory. There she meets Terra, who has Kizuna's phone. Mizuki Bibi gets Terra at gunpoint, but is betrayed by Ryuki, who shoots her in the chest with a taser gun. Mizuki, Bibi, collapses. In 2.15, Mizuki Chapter 5, M1 births, Bibi states, Do you hate Ryuki? Of course I do. I want to shove a pipe in his mouth and stir up his organs. Six years ago, he... It made my heart condition worse. It affected my work. I can't investigate properly if I have to go to the hospital all the time. Because of this, Bibi would come to resent Ryuki. The electric shock also deactivates Aiba, but Mizuki Bibi is able to manually repair the AI ball and wink sync with Ryuki. She sees the person that Ryuki went to meet with at 4pm, Terra. Terra blackmails Ryuki with a method of deleting all the information on the Wadget system, including Tama. Terra asks Ryuki to lead Date to the execution chamber. This is where Kizuna is. Terra hands Tama back to Ryuki, but with a self-destruct program that ensures Ryuki will do as Terra asks. At this moment, Date comes to the scene and Ryuki runs away. Date shoots Terra with powerful anesthetic bullets. Date is surprised by Mizuki Bibi's appearance. What's wrong? She asks. Nothing. You're just so similar, he replies. Bibi is familiar with Date, but this is their first time actually meeting. Mizuki Bibi doesn't tell Date her name. Due to Terra being shot with anesthetic bullets, they are unable to ask where Kizuna is. Luckily, the old sink machine is still in the abandoned factory, and Date takes Mizuki Bibi there. 2.14, Mizuki Chapter 4, M1, Non-Entity Incognito. Mizuki Bibi sinks with Terra. You complete a series of puzzles and discover that Tokiko and Jakarta have a son, Jin Furue, and that Terra is someone who wants the love from them that they only give to Jin. 2.14, Mizuki Chapter 4, M1, In Truth. Mizuki Bibi awakens from the Somnium and finds Tokiko in the abandoned factory. She confirms what was learned in the Somnium. Then, Terra wakes up. Date comes out of hiding and shoots at Terra, the bullets shatter the left half of Terra's mask, revealing Jin Furue's face. Of course, we know from the full story that this is in fact Udo Somazuki, and that the right half of his face was taken from him and given to Jin, and that all images of Jin online are edited to mirror the right side of his face, but the characters here don't know that yet. Mizuki Bibi collapses as her heart begins to cause her pain again. She is now unable to continue the investigation due to her worsened heart condition, taking her out of action for the rest of the six years ago flashbacks. February 15th, Friday, six years ago. 2.15, Ryuki Chapter 5 R1, not all a dream. Ryuki talks to boss in her office. She says that her daughter Bibi didn't come home last night, but that she was able to get a hold of her so she knows that she's safe. Ryuki looks for Kizuna all over town. He knows from Terra that she's in the execution chamber, but he has no idea where this is yet, and he can't tell anyone about the blackmail or Terra will destroy Tama. While looking for information, he heads to the Sargon residence. There he finds Hitomi taking care of the masked woman, Bibi. Hitomi says that she found her collapsed in a nearby park. I wanted to call her an ambulance, but she refused. She wouldn't even let me take her to the hospital, so I brought her here. After coming here, she injected herself with some kind of medicine she had. It seemed to have helped a little. She asked if she could rest here for a bit. Wink syncing with Hitomi shows that she is telling the truth, as you witness the moment of her discovering Bibi. At first I thought she was lying and that Date had brought her here. It seems strange to me that Date would have left Bibi, so only assume that she insisted that she was fine before collapsing in the park on her way back from the factory. During his search, he heads to Nai's. Here he meets Tokiko's hologram, who talks to him more about the simulation theory. At this point, a lot of terrible things have been happening to Ryuki, and the HB case have been triggering the return of his mental trauma from his brother's death. This, combined with all this new information about the simulation theory from Tokiko, manifests in him hallucinating glitches that would support this theory. The real Tokiko shows up, and he has his first glitchy hallucination. Ryuki then gets a call from Date. He says that he's learned that a man in an iron mask is at the Sejima residence. Ryuki rushes over there, and when he arrives, he sees So and Iris collapsed in front of him. Iris overheard So and Terra talking in the garden, but fell over and got a concussion, meaning that she can't remember the details. Ryuki wink sinks with her and hears the phrase, execution chamber. Ryuki takes Iris back to Abyss to sink with her. 2.15, Ryuki Chapter 5, R1, Nemesis Identified. In Iris' Somnium, Ryuki and Tama battle their way through So's guards with Kusemon and find two pieces of information. 
Sar's mistress had a child, and that the execution chamber lies at the abyss of nine exes, the cathedral at Nai's Japan branch. 2.15, Ryuki Chapter 5 R1, She Was the Universe. Ryuki, Date, Gan, Lian, and Mizuki all head to the cathedral at Nai's Japan branch to save Kizuna. They see Kizuna tied up, groups of Nai's members attack them and they fight their way towards Kizuna. However, there are thermite bombs behind her. Terra appears with the detonator. He asks Ryuki to kill Date, following through with his blackmailing from earlier, but Ryuki can't do it. As punishment, he pushes the detonator and blows up the area. They are all surrounded by explosive fire. An injured Mizuki and Kizuna are carried out by Gan and Lian. Mizuki has lost an eye and Kizuna can no longer walk. Date is stuck under some rubble. He gives Ryuki Aiba, who has been broken in the explosion. He asks Ryuki something. When I called you today, I told you a man in a mask was at Tsujima's. And you said, it's terror. How? How did you know? How did you know the man in the iron mask was terror? Yesterday, was it you that ran away, Ryuki? Referring to the abandoned factory incident. He is then thought to be killed by some falling rubble. Due to the Abyss network troubles, Iva's memory is lost and the last backup was from before the 11th. This means that she has no memory of her time with Bibi. Present. February 10th, Sunday. Present. 2.10. Converge Chapter 0. A Strange Tale. Mizuki is sent a Nile message from an unknown sender, Amame, to visit the stadium. Bibi, identity obscured with a mask, shoots rubber bullets at Mizuki. In 2.15, Mizuki Chapter 5, M1 Births, Bibi states, But when I heard you recently joined Abyss, I shadowed you. And February 10th, when you went to the stadium, I got there before you and found the corpse. At the time, I had no clue it was Uru's left half, but I knew it had to do with the HB case from six years ago. I told you before that the one thing I wanted was for you to live a normal life. I couldn't let you get caught up in this case. I had to stop you. That's why she shoots at Mizuki, to dissuade her from finding the corpse. Her plan doesn't work, and Mizuki finds Uru's left half in the stadium anyway. Because Jin had the right half of Uru's face, and images were edited to make it appear as his full face, this corpse is believed to be of Jin. At this point, Uru is still unknown to the main cast. Mizuki remembers what happened at Studio Divider six years ago. Mizuki goes to Brahmin to talk to Ryuki, who had investigated the HBK six years ago. Ryuki had already heard the news and tried to drink to forget. Mizuki realizes she isn't going to get anywhere talking with him and brings him to Abyss to sync with him. 2.10, Mizuki Chapter Zero, New Investigation. Mizuki syncs with Ryuki and learns about his deceased brother. Ryuki's somnium takes place in the cathedral underneath Nai's. 2.10, Mizuki Chapter Zero, Alone. After the sync, Mizuki takes Ryuki to the interrogation room. This is where he reveals that he already knew about the body at the stadium from Tama. Mizuki continues to question him, but Ryuki simply lets out a creepy laugh and loses consciousness. Presumably a combination of his drunkenness and mental trauma. On another route, which leads to Explosion End, Ryuki tells Mizuki about what happened six years ago, which leads to the flashbacks of the events that we see from Ryuki's perspective. However, on the route that leads to Resolution End, Ryuki does not tell Mizuki what happened in the past. February 11th, Monday, Present. 2.11, Mizuki Chapter 1, Pass Mildly Away. Mizuki uses Iba's AR function to investigate the stadium. She finds results that show that a one-wheeled robot carried the corpse. This is clearly Shoma's robot. As we learn later, it was Shoma's sister, Amame, who used the robot to carry the corpse to the center of the stadium. Mizuki doesn't know this yet though, and so follows the lead to investigate Shoma. However, when she visits the Ender residence, Shoma isn't home, and neither is his robot. At Yoyagi Park, Mizuki encounters Lian and Kizuna. Kizuna talks to Mizuki about her other big sis, Bibi. The one you lived with from 9 to 16, right? Mizuki asks, indicating that she knows about her, though obviously not who she is. Mizuki notices that Kizuna seems a bit down, and wink syncing with her indicates that she feels guilty about Lian's company, and believes that he only spends time with her out of his own guilt for not being able to save her from the rubble six years ago. Wink syncing with him indicates that this isn't true, and that he does still love her, though he does feel guilty for not being able to save her. At Brahman, Mizuki asks Gen why he wasn't with Ryuki last night at the bar. Gen makes up two different contradictory excuses, which is a bit suspicious. Amame seems preoccupied by something. When Mizuki asks what's up, she talks about the disappearances that have been happening lately, and the rumors online that they're connected to the Nirvana Initiative. Then, Amame begins to look teary-eyed and says that she's heading home now. Amame, you really don't look too good. Want me to take you to the hospital? 
It's okay. I just need some rest. The reason for her distress is obviously everything that she was involved with yesterday from carrying the corpse to the stadium and all that with Tokiko. At the hospital, Mizuki talks to a nurse who briefly knew Jin Fudue when he was a teen. He had come to the hospital due to a visceral disease. She also states that he seemed quite different than when she knew him. At Sekiba High, Mizuki encounters a disturbed Ryuki in the classroom where Chikata's right half was found six years ago. He claims that the investigation has only just begun. Then, when Mizuki asks him about six years ago, Ryuki acts confused and says that he doesn't want to talk about it. Clearly, he thinks that he is in the past and that Mizuki is asking him about his brother's death, which is now 12 years ago. This is further evidence to support the fact that Ryuki is experiencing the past and future muddled together due to his trauma. He says that he'll head to Akume Shrine to calm down. After he leaves, Mizuki says that he's supposed to be on leave of absence. Mizuki gets a call from Gen telling her that Shoma might be at Horidori Institute. Mizuki heads there. She is attacked by the researchers but is rescued by the masked woman, Bibi. She tells Mizuki that she is trying to find out about the dark side of their research and that she wants to find out who did this to her. She also tells Mizuki about what she had learned in Terra Somnium six years ago, that Jakarta and Tokiko had a child. She also tells her more of the information she has learned in the intervening years, that Jakarta forced Tokiko to put their child up for adoption in exchange for her position as the head of Japanese branch of Nice. She then tells Mizuki to be wary of Ryuki. After the battle with the researchers, Kizuna shows up. Kizuna tells Mizuki that Shoma has gone camping in the mountains of Nagano, but she won't say why she was at Horidori Institute. Wink syncing with Kizuna reveals something relating to Chikara. Mizuki takes her to Abyss to sync with her. 211. Mizuki Chapter 1 Nostalgic Idol. In Kizuna's Somnium, Mizuki learns about Kizuna's memories of her big sis, Bibi. Mizuki also makes a surprising discovery written in Reichi's journal, something about inhuman genome experiments carried out at a Horidori research facility. 211. Mizuki Chapter 1 Where I Was Born. Mizuki and Kizuna head to Iowan. Finally, Kizuna opens up about what she was searching for at Horidori Institute. She had learned about a girl whose genes were forcibly rewritten from her father's journal. She gives the book to Mizuki. There was a girl, a child whose DNA was rewritten. Chikara Horidori performed this task himself. The goal was to find a cure for aging, but the results were unexpected. The child has superhuman athletic abilities, strength, endurance, agility. They were all beyond that of normal adults and these abilities only grew as she got older. This child was raised away from Iowan. When she was three, she was adopted. That child's name was Mizuki. The family name was Okiura. M Mizuki? I'm genetically modified? But what about daddy and mom? They... Weren't my real parents? This is the reason why Mizuki wants to go to Horidori Institute on the night of the 12th. February 12th, Tuesday, present. 2.12, Ryuki Chapter 2, Nothing to be done. Following what he told Mizuki at Sekiba High, Ryuki has come to Ikume Shrine to calm down. Ryuki tells Tama that he's been thinking about Chikata's murder. She asks him, are you sure you're okay, Ryuki? given that that event was six years ago. However, Ryuki's memories have become warped by his mental trauma, and he believes that Jakarta's death has only just occurred. He replies, what do you mean? He asks her to recreate the crime scene, and she reluctantly plays along. The investigation reveals that Jakarta's organs were removed. Lacking many leads, Ryuki decides that they should visit Tokiko again. Since Nais are heavily linked with the HB case, Ryuki asks her about Chikara's murder. Tokiko denies that Nais have anything to do with the murders. They talk about Nais and the Order of Percent again. Then, Tokiko talks more about the simulation theory. During their conversation, Tokiko knocks a glass doll on the floor, smashing it to pieces. In 2.15, Ryuki Chapter 5 R1, six years ago, you can see that the glass doll is not smashed, which is a hint towards the timeline twist. Ryuki wink sinks with Tokiko and sees her blackmailing someone. This someone is Amame. Ryuki brings her to Abyss to sink with her. 2.12. Ryuki Chapter 2, Nice at Loss's Intentions. Ryuki sinks with Tokiko. Inside her Somnium, Ryuki and Tama see Gen and Shoma. 2.12. Ryuki Chapter 2, Go. Tokiko tells Ryuki to meet him at her office at 10 o'clock at night. Before then, Ryuki decides to look for Gen and Shoma. Ryuki finds Shoma at home. He asks him about Tokiko and the Nirvana trial, but Shoma won't tell him much. Ryuki also asks Shoma about his dad. Shoma's voice begins to crack and he says, I'm sorry, please don't talk to me about my dad. At this point, 
Dookie believes that Komeji is still alive, but really he died six years ago. At Brahmin, Dookie asks Gen about Tokiko and the Nirvana Initiative. He doesn't know much about either of them, but Amame, who is there too, seems to have a reaction to both. Ryuki asks, and she claims she's just heard about them online. Gen also tells Ryuki that he always goes to the warehouse district in the morning, since he can't store meat or fish in the freezer, after he lost the key. We later learn that Gen has been storing the body that Komeji stole six years ago in the freezer to protect both him and Amame. Ryuki heads to the harbor warehouse district and finds the masked woman, Bibi. She doesn't seem to like him very much. Ryuki heads to Yoyagi Park where he meets Lian. Lian tells him that he just got a request from someone, and he agreed to it on the spot, but now he's wondering if he should have refused instead. Ryuki asks what it is, but Lian simply says that it's confidential. This request was made by Mizuki, who, after learning that she was genetically modified by Horidori Institute yesterday, asked Lian to help her break in and find the truth. Ryuki wink syncs with him and sees him telling her, Well, I don't know the situation exactly. But I understand what you're asking. You want to get inside that facility and take a look around. Maybe there's something there. No, I didn't see anything last time I was there. Oh well. I'll accept your request. So stop making that face, alright? Cheer up, please. Although Ryuki has no idea who he's talking to. Lian leaves, and Ryuki proceeds to watch the Nirvana trial video. He has another glitchy hallucination. Riki blacks out and wakes up back at night. He hurries to the president's office only to discover Tokiko's right half. The culprit must be Terra. It's not, but how did they get in and out? To find the truth, Riki and Tama start an investigation. Beyond the waterfall is an elevator. Riki gets on and heads underground. There he finds the box containing TC Purge. He doesn't know what it is, but you can hear a squirting sound indicating that he has been injected with the virus. Riki is still recovering from a TC Purge episode when he sees someone in the cathedral, but they appear as a blue silhouette to him. He comments on this, but Tama doesn't know what he means. Riki chases them, but he takes a great fall and is knocked unconscious. This also damages Tama, since the cathedral is so deep underground, a backup of her data could not be made. Because of this, they have no record of the blue silhouette. We learn later on that this person was a mame. February 13th, Wednesday, present. 2.13. Mizuki Chapter 3, The Expensive Spirit Last night, Mizuki and Lian broke into Horidori Institute, so that Mizuki could find out more about her past as a genetically modified baby. Now, at 1am, they find themselves in its hidden underground area. Mizuki thinks she hears something, but they don't know what it is, and Aiba detects no biological life. We learn in Amame's Somnium that this was Amame. She hears Mizuki and then runs, so Aiba doesn't detect her by the time she does her scan. They discover the left half of Tokiko's body in one of two slicing machines beneath the facility. These slicing machines must have been used to cut all the bodies related to the HB case. They also find evidence that Tokiko had slit her wrists, but this was not the cause of death. Mizuki enters through another door and finds herself in Udo's room, although she still doesn't know who they are yet. She finds Udo's diary and entries from six years ago on the 9th. They describe Udo as killing Jikata, but it doesn't state their names. Then, an entry on the 10th states that he talked to Mom, Tokiko, about their plans for the Nirvana Initiative. They then state their new name, Terra. Mizuki also finds a computer which contains the project files for the Nirvana trial and QR videos. There are also thermite bombs here. In the morning, Mizuki heads out for more investigating. She meets Shoma, who looks exactly the same as he did six years ago. As we learn later, this is because he is also genetically modified. He tells her that his robot went missing and that he is now building a new one. He also tells Mizuki that he used to be a member of Nye's. He then asks Mizuki how Jin's body went up in flames six years ago. She tells him about the thermite bombs. Mizuki heads to Iowan where she meets Kizuna and Lian. Their relationship troubles from the 11th, Monday, are still ongoing. Mizuki encourages them to dig up their time capsules from six years ago. They read each other's notes and realize that they do both love each other. Lian says that It could have been the worst day of my life, but now it's become the best day of my life. Mizuki winks things with Lian to find out what he means, and sees him discovering something shocking. This event is Lian finding the body in Gen's freezer after Gen asked him to help unlock it. Mizuki visits Brahmin, and Gen seems to be in a bad mood. Mizuki winks things with them and finds Gen saying that he will protect Amame with his life, and Amame asking her dad to watch her from heaven. When asked, Amame says that her dad died six years ago. Mizuki eventually ends up at a Kume shrine in the evening. A group of Nai's members are gathered. 
Wink syncing with them reveals that they are planning a rehearsal to launch TC Purge in a warhead tonight. Mizuki gets into a fight with them and the masked woman, Bibi, comes to our aid. The Knives members run off and Bibi begins to have heart troubles again. Despite her insistence, Mizuki stays with the masked woman instead of chasing the goons. They both head to Iowan and rest. The masked woman reveals that she was raised to Iowan. She also reveals that she was subject to genome experiments, causing her to be blind in one eye and with a weak heart. She then tells Mizuki that she was adopted from ages of 9 to 15, her time with the Kizuna's family. The masked woman then tells Mizuki that she doesn't want her to get involved in the case. Mizuki asks why she's being so protective of her, but their conversation is cut off by more heart pains. Bibi falls unconscious. Iba suggests taking her to Abyss to sync with her. Boss and Pewter aren't there, but Mizuki sinks anyway. 213. Mizuki Chapter 3. Neurotic Inception. Mizuki sinks with the masked woman, Bibi, and experiences her horrible upbringing at Horidori Institute at the hands of Chikada's experiments. Mizuki finds out that there was someone the masked woman wanted to protect, Mizuki, and that she had met Terra before, at the abandoned factory six years ago. 213. Mizuki Chapter 3 M1. Hell. Remembering the rehearsal that was supposed to take place tonight, Mizuki and the masked woman, Bibi, head out to stop it. They find themselves at Misaton, but Ryuki is already there. Ryuki is clearly not alright and is suffering from another TC Purge episode. When asked, are you okay, Ryuki claims, Mr. Date seemed well too. I saw him earlier, despite the fact that Date has been presumed dead for six years. Then, when asked, why are you looking at the ferris wheel, he responds, I'm waiting for it to come down. At this exact same time six years ago, 2.13, Ryuki Chapter 3, R1 smiles for tears, Ryuki was chasing Shoma who had run away from home. Shoma gets into the number two car of the ferris wheel and then the chapter ends with Ryuki waiting for it to come back down. Ryuki thinks that he is back then and is waiting for Shoma to come back down. This is supported by Wink sinking with him where you can hear him say, I have to protect him before something terrible happens. Baby is not forgiven Ryuki for betraying her and making her heart condition worse six years ago. So she punches and kicks him to get him back for six years ago. This knocks Ryuki unconscious. Mizuki and Bibi find the rocket, but are not fast enough to stop it. Luckily, this is just the rehearsal. February 14th, Thursday, present. 2.14, Ryuki Chapter 4, R1, well known. Five minutes past midnight, Ryuki wakes back up. He still thinks that he's six years in the past, waiting for Shoma to come down on the ferris wheel. He says to Tama, Shoma was on the number two car, right? She responds, why do you ask? When the Namati car comes back around, Shoma is of course nowhere to be seen. Ryuki is shocked and then has another TC purge induced episode. In the morning, Ryuki visits Ikume Shrine. He is still suffering from TC purge and asks Tama to replay the scene from Studio Divider from six years ago. Tama shows concern for Ryuki's mental health and he replies, I want to solve the HB case no matter what. She agrees to recreate the scene but makes him promise to see help once the investigation is over. In the investigation, Ryuki finds that Amame must have seen Terra in Studio Divider. He decides to look for her. In his search, he sees Leon at Yoyagi Park, who says that he saw Amame in front of Horidori Institute on the 10th. She was talking to Tokiko two days before her death. Leon also says that in his stealing days, he used to work with the Kumakuras, where he was usually partnered with Quartz, Bibi. Ryuki encounters the masked woman, Bibi, at Iowen. She is looking for where the main event might take place, the TC Purge Rocket. Ryuki eventually finds Amame at Sunfish Pocket. She seems down and Ryuki assumes it's because of the death of her father. That isn't it, as that happened six years ago. In reality, it's her meeting with Tokiko that occupies her mind. Amame won't talk, so Ryuki brings her to Abyss to sync with her. Boss and Pewter aren't there, but Ryuki sinks anyway. 2.14, Ryuki Chapter 4 R1, nearly interesting. Amame's Somnium is a quiz show at Studio Divider. In the Somnium, Ryuki and Tama witness Amame meet Terra and repeat the words, Nirvana Collected Genocide. 2.14, Ryuki Chapter 4 R1, The Mind of a God. Ryuki gets a call from Aiba telling him that Kizuna has gone missing. He helps in the search. Ryuki thinks that she's gone missing because of the video, but that isn't true. We find out that she was just eloping with Lian because her father didn't approve of their relationship. We do, but Ryuki doesn't. Ryuki now has another TC Purge incident and believes that he's six years in the past where Kizuna was kidnapped by Terra. Interlude. What was Mizuki doing on the 14th? At the beginning of the next chapter, 215, Mizuki Chapter 5, M1 Births, narration explains that Kizuna has gone missing. Last night, around 11 o'clock, Reichi Cheera, her father, contacted me. Aiba and I started our search for Kizzy. After a while, I got a call on my phone. It was her, the masked woman. She told me to meet her here at Iowan. 
Then, when the chapter begins, it is already 3.10 a.m. on the 15th, and Bibi has already revealed her identity to Mizuki. This is the only part of the timeline that we don't get the full picture of. We never encounter or hear about Mizuki on the 15th with Ryuki, and the next chapter clearly follows on from an event that we don't see in this timeline. However, in the Kizuna and Lian end timelines, we do get to see what Mizuki was up to on this date. Unfortunately, the two timelines contradict each other, so clearly not everything that happened there happens in this timeline, but it does give us some idea of what might have happened. In this timeline, Mizuki syncs with Lian and finds out about him opening the freezer at Brahman and discovering the body again hid there. She also goes down to the cathedral at Nice and discovers some information that she will also find in the main part later. Then she finds out that Lian and Kizuna are planning to elope together, since Kizuna's father disapproves of their relationship. He sends armed guards after the group and Mizuki makes to fight them off. The masked woman helps her out and during the fight her mask is cracked, revealing her face, identical to Mizuki. Kizuna and Lian successfully elope and Bibi tells Mizuki that she will explain things with her later. My best guess as to what happens in the main route. In the previous day, when Ryuki meets Bibi at Iowan, sometime between 935 and 1755, if you wink sync with her she says, I need to hurry, if I don't, I'm pretty sure she's talking about the launch of the TC Purge rocket here, but she could also be talking about her limited time to live due to her disease. Either way, it's clear that Bibi feels that time is of the essence in this moment, and perhaps she thought that today would be the last chance she would get to share her identity with her sister. Perhaps it was always her intention to reveal who she was to Mizuki on this day, and her mask breaking in the other timeline just sped up her plans a little. February 15th, Friday, present. 2.15, Mizuki Chapter 5, M1, Births. That brings us to 3.10 a.m. on the 15th. Bibi has revealed who she is to Mizuki, and they have a heart to heart. Bibi reveals everything about her past that was still unclear. Mizuki was born from the modified DNA of the masked woman. Mizuki used to call her Bibi when she was younger. Bibi and Mizuki head to Brahman, they find Date, Kizuna, and Lian all alive and well. Mizuki is shocked and emotional to see Date alive after six years of having thought him dead. Inside the freezer, they find the left half of Jin's body. Everyone explains the situation. Afterward, Mizuki heads to the cathedral and finds a handwritten letter from Tokiko, and everything starts to make sense. The right half of Urusa Mizuki, Terra, is in the cathedral. Additionally, it is revealed that there are two cathedrals that are accessed from different points. The one that was destroyed six years ago is still destroyed. This is another. A secret entrance leads to the destroyed cathedral where they find Ryuki. Ryuki has come to the cathedral thinking that Kizuna is here, as she was six years ago. But now, he has caught up to the end of events six years ago and is beginning to see the truth. The gang all get together and help Ryuki snap out of his TC purged induced hallucinations. And they all share the information that they know. In four hours, the Nirvana Initiative will commence. They find the time and date from the videos, but they still don't know the location, or who was responsible for the HB killings after Uru's death. They seek out Amame for more clues and evidence begins to pile up that she is the current culprit of the HB case. Gan and Shoma try to protect her, but the Abyss Sync has managed to get Amame to Abyss to sync with her and learn the truth. 2.15. Mizuki Chapter 5, M1. Nightmare Irreconcilable. In Amame's Somnium, the remaining mysteries are discovered. A drunk Komeiji six years ago on the morning of the 11th stole Jin's left half, planning to use it as blackmail against Terra, Uru, and get out of debt. When he sobers up, he realizes he's made a grave mistake. Amame asks Gen for help, and he agrees to hide the body in his freezer. Komeiji would then be killed by Terra as revenge for messing with his plans. Then, at Studio Divita, Amame would meet Terra for the first time. Six years later, in the present, on the 10th, Amame met with Terra again and killed him. Tokiko saw this and used it as blackmail. Tokiko commanded Amame to use Shoma's robot to place Uru's right half in the center of the stadium on the 10th and send the Nile message to Mizuki. Tokiko commits suicide on the slicer on the 12th and had arranged for Amame to place her right half in her office. 2.15 Mizuki Chapter 5, M1, The End of Craving. By cross-referencing all of the places in which bodies related to the HB case were found, they discover that the location of the Nirvana Initiative will be the stadium. The whole group heads out to stop Uru's plans and face off against a larger group of goons from Nice, Hododori Institute and a mercenary group. Eventually, they are able to stop the rocket containing TC Purge. During the battle, Ryuki is totally, definitely, like actually for reals, killed. February 22nd. Friday, present. 2.22, epilogue, braver than all flowers. Mizuki and Bibi wander around town talking to all their friends. Boss has told them she has a present hidden for them, and that she's given their friends clues. 
Putting the clues together, they make their way to the stadium where they discover their present. Ryuki is alive! I'm not sure if Bibi would consider that a very good gift. Everyone is happy and they all have a dance party musical.